And we're here for the latest episode of OMG JK. I'm Jason Kincaid. And I'm MG Siegler. Uh, today we're going to kick off by starting to talk about the thing that we went to this morning, which was a Google event in San Francisco where they showed off some of their new voice search technology and also gave out some Droid 2 phones, which is a new phone that came out today uh, from Verizon. So it was, what would you think about the event? I thought the event overall, it was, it was pretty compelling. Uh, there were two features they touched on. The first was the improved voice actions. It's not just right. search. Uh, there was an expanded range of things you can do with your voice. Uh, the second was a little less exciting. It's cool, but it's something you wrote about a few months ago, right. where you click a button to send a web page you're currently browsing or a map directly to your Android phone. Right, that's just a browser extension, and if you're on a web page, you just hit it, and then it pops up on your phone. It's kind of cool, but yeah, the bigger thing was obviously mm -hmm. the voice stuff that they did. Right, and uh, so just to touch on some of the things that the new voice search lets you do, you can say, you know, listen to uh, the Rolling Stones, and it'll pop open Pandora or whatever your music app is. Right, the key to, to that, the cool thing about that is that it doesn't have to be a, a song that you have locally stored on your actual device. It can mm -hmm. be anything on the internet, and they'll like pop up Pandora, like you said, or, mm -hmm. or do something else. And if you say, uh, you know, you want directions to a certain restaurant, or you just want to look up a certain restaurant, it doesn't have to be anything in your context. They can just look throughout all of Google and look for that. And I, I think the interesting part of this is, uh, I think Android's voice search has been ahead for quite a while now. Uh, compared to the iPhone, and now it's just leaps and bounds ahead. And I'm sort of wondering, <laughs> well, okay. how do you respond to well, that? Let's say what the iPhone one is. The iPhone one is like sort of different. It's, it's basically you can hit a button and you say like call so-and-so. It's all inside the phone. There's no searching for Google, so obviously Google's a lot better. And how often does it work? <laughs> it's pretty bad. I it's mean, pretty bad. Like, I, I I MG Siegler says something Apple it's is It's a feature, bad. I, I don't know anyone really who uses it. When I tried to use it when it was, first came out, which was like over a year ago already, you know, you, you say, uh, call my mother, and it's, you know, calls like an ex-girlfriend or something, someone you don't want to talk <laughs> to. It's just, it's perfect like that. Now, uh, so obviously Google's uh, thing is a lot better here. But at the same time, Apple hasn't really put much resources into this idea, whereas Google's, you know, poured a ton in. Maybe with uh, Apple buying Siri, that company, they'll be able to do more stuff. But it's something we, I, we talked a little bit about earlier. I think Google has been investing so many resources. I don't know if just acquiring one company, not to say you know, Siri isn't a great company, but all the research and more important, all the huge volume of incoming voice queries that Google has to use for their research, it seems like that would be difficult for Apple to Yeah, they have all that great uh, voicemail transcription that they for do, Google which voice. is just They're so perfect. Better. Oh, right. God, those, those are accurate every time. They're 100% right. All right, duly noted. <laughs> I, think, I think the other uh, interesting stat today that came out, uh, Google revealed that 25% of query, search queries from yeah. Android 2.0 uh, devices in the United States are used, using voice, uh, which was way higher than I expected. They said it's higher than even Google expected. Right, that's pretty crazy. I mean, we had some commenters saying like they think that that's just complete bullshit. You know, I don't know. Who knows? But so I you're, need to you, take them at their word. So you're sort of insinuating that Google may be lying. Uh, well, may, we'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see. Take their word on it. But that's kind of weird. I mean, do you see a lot of people, you know, holding their phone up to their mouth? And I saying, can't say I've ever actually seen anyone doing <laughs> right, that. So but I've never. That's it. it. Well, I've done it. I've never. You've really done looked. it to test it out, or you do it. When no, you're... actually, when I'm trying to impress my friends, <laughs> okay, I'll so pull out my phone. I'm like, or, yeah. hey guys, check this out. Like, navigate to TechCrunch. Right. right. Exactly. But I, I mean, I do think it is a cool technology for the future, and I think Apple should invest in it. All these people should. You know, it won't be the end all, be all thing of uh, search, but it's still a cool technology. And I, I think that's also a good answer. You know, Steve Jobs said uh, a couple of events ago that people on the iPhone or on phones in general aren't right. there to search. search right. They're there for apps like right, Yelp. Right. And I think this is a case where. You know, there are probably a, a finite number of searches that people do routinely, but it shows that some of them use Google. And, that, and that's, well, that's great. That's a great point that people who are using these new features, these are routine things that you do. You know, you mm -hmm. can do note to self, and mm -hmm. it's pretty cool, and it sends a, an email back to yourself, or you can, you know, directions, navigation, things like that that you do common. There's mm -hmm. 12, right now, 12 it's features. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, so that's pretty cool. And quickly, let's talk about the device itself. You have one, I have one over right. here. So we have the, the Droid 2. Droid 2. We're giving him back in 30 days, just <laughs> FYI, everyone. Right. Um, so I had the original Droid for a few months, and this, this new one definitely feels sturdier. Uh, the edges are less sharp. It, it just feels more polished in general, literally. It, uh, yeah, <laughs> it seems like a pretty solid, I mean, a solid Droid phone. 
I'll say that. Uh, it's definitely better than the Evo, which was just a piece of crap, and I hated that thing. But this, you know, this seems like pretty good. I've used it for a few hours, so I'm not ready to, you know, make any kind of definitive statement about it yet. But I'll say that you'll it's, give it a few more days before you decide <laughs> you before I it. rip it. No, I do. I do think it's a lot better than the Evo, and um, you know, I just don't understand why they feel the need to include the physical keyboard. Yeah, you know, I think. I think it's it a makes good it crush. twice as thick. It's heavier. I, I think you're right on that point. When I first got the Droid last year, uh, I think you said something similar. Who needs a physical keyboard? And I was right. like, oh, you know, it's really nice to have. And I think it was for about two weeks, and then I kind of learned that I didn't really. Yeah, so want it's a it. transition thing or whatever. Exactly. And I mean, Blackberry I'd actually been using the iPhone even before I got the Droid, so I was pretty used to the touchscreen. And I just think the trade-off for for not having to lug the keyboard around, yeah. which and it's, I know, I mean, how you, you have to do it. It's in, not if you have to do it in bad. one hand. It's uh, but really, I, I think the touchscreen's more than enough for most people. That said, some people love the keyboard, so I'm sure it'll do just yeah, as well as dead. the original Droid. Dead. <laughs> okay, so uh, the second topic we're going to talk about is the new Twitter Share This button, or and this is something that goes directly against Tweet Meme, which has pretty much dominated the retweet yeah. button up until now. I know right. we've had it on TechRunch for quite a while now. Like every site has And it. we just replaced it with the official Twitter button. So is, is tweet meme screwed? Well, Twitter was very smart in their politicking here, whatever they were doing behind the scenes, because normally, you know, this would have people up in arms that Twitter again is taking... Another control. hole is filled. Right, another hole is filled. They're killing another startup. This is, you know, the big guy, even though Twitter's still technically a startup, you know, the big guy taking out the little guy. But Twitter obviously struck a deal with TweetMeme behind the scenes, and TweetMeme seems fine to just give away control of their of the button, you know, race now to Twitter itself. I don't know if they had a whole lot of control over whether or not they're going to get <laughs> right. destroyed. So I think they probably took what they could get. Yeah, but it seems. I mean, it hasn't been fully, you know, reported on what's going on yet. But it seems like there might be some kind of, uh, you know, licensing agreement. So mm -hmm. of course, you know, for for monetary purposes. Right. Uh, so that would be a great deal for TweetMeme if going forward they get a cut of, you know, like. Certain whatever revenue every retweet Twitter they get a penny or a yeah, right, fraction right. of a penny. That'd I don't be, think, I don't think that's, a great thing, that's definitely not what's happening. Right. Um, but do you think this is something going forward? Twitter is going to do more often when they are about to eat one of their own. I mean, community this is members. obviously a much better policy than just you know wiping destroying them everyone. Out and then everyone. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's not just the you know the single companies that they're that they're ruining by doing things like that. It's it's the whole mentality of the ecosystem because right. the ecosystem is such an important part of what Twitter is. And if they you know show that they're going off and killing these companies, mm -hmm. everyone's going to be terrified to do anything. So mm -hmm. smart move by them, I think here. Uh, so the next topic I think we're going to talk about uh, was net neutrality <laughs> and, and Google and Verizon, and just what a complete screw up this may or may not be. Uh, so what's your take? I mean, what was, what was actually the news this week for people who didn't catch it? Uh, so yeah, so this has been going on for several days already, and it's going to keep going on. I mean, uh, Google and Verizon got together behind the scenes, and they've been working on this for a little bit, I guess. You know, they've been talking about what's the best way, what's the best policy that they can come up with that they think will be fair to all parties involved. And you know, this is just the two of them talking, but they're, they're giving this to the US government to try and, you know, come up with a, a real net neutrality policy. And every this this is everyone, you know, has a an opinion on this. Mm -hmm. And this really caused a shitstorm this week because it's kind of like Google is compromising mm -hmm. uh, instead of you know, holding firm to the, the net neutrality beliefs. Right, and I think the long story short was that uh, they got Verizon to agree to net neutrality on wired connections. Yes. But wireless connections, which I think Google's line was that it's a very competitive marketplace, and for some reason that means that right. they don't have to put protections. The whole problem, the neutrality. problem as I see with all this stuff is there's way too much gray area for all this, even with exactly. the wired stuff, because they still talk that, well, maybe, you know, uh, cable companies or whoever is the ISP can mm -hmm. have their own offerings that are separate from... And you know, the that, internet. It's like right, right. you could have, I guess I understand the TV, but there's definitely, as long as you've got some digital service that isn't on the, the normal internet, you can regulate I mean, it however you want. The truth, just, the truth of the matter is, and Google has to know this, Verizon has to know this, they all have to know this, is that this is all going, merging into one thing. I mean, eventually mm -hmm. television will be served over the internet. It'll be a mm -hmm. long time before that happens, but it, it's all going to be in one pipe. And mm -hmm. so them trying to segregate these things out is just turning into a nightmare. It's it, I think it's, it just seems. I, I mean, Google and Verizon obviously aren't stupid, but it seems sort of sh short-sighted in some senses. Like saying that wireless is still, they're still new and the, oh, the market yeah. is developing, so <laughs> we're making compromises for now. It's like, all right, well, in a few years, they're, sort of, they're setting precedents here that you know, it's okay for there to be this kind of carrier control over the wireless spectrum. And I think the, the fear is that 
users could get used to that, and they may not rebel necessarily, or sure, the government sure. could get used to it. And that's undoubtedly what kind of Verizon is hoping for here. I mean, yeah, the whole thing is a little bit humorous because obviously Google and Verizon have a have a huge billion dollar you know pact with one another over mm -hmm. Android, which they claim it has nothing. Right, to do with they it. claim it has nothing to do with it. I mean, the bottom line is this: this is obviously all about money. Google, if Google really stuck to its guns, maybe nothing would get done, and that's kind of their position on it. You know, mm -hmm. like if we don't compromise, you know, nothing will get done. But really, I mean, it's about them making money. Like they need stuff to get done in order for these partnerships to keep going forward. And yeah, the whole wireless thing, it's like. Verizon's, you know, they're fine with giving away some of the wired stuff because all their money going forward is going to be in the, the wireless spectrum. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's what they need for the future. Right. Okay. And I think also Google's PR strategy here was just terrible. Like, they, oh, they yeah. lost so much good faith. Just They could have, you know, first was a story that broke last week saying that there was right. this impending Rumors announcement. Like, right. oh, no, these are totally false. And then, yeah, there was actually an announcement a few days later. But the original story was wrong, but it wasn't, you know, it was wrong. Yeah, yet. they've handled this yeah. uh, poorly. All right, last topic. Uh, so sort of a, a combined number of stories. Uh, we've got Google investing big time in Zynga right. uh, and acquiring companies like Slide. And then we hear that Google Ventures has invested in NG Moco, the, uh, the iPhone development studio. Right. So I mean, what, what do you think is happening here? Is Google just becoming a gaming powerhouse? Well, or? so it, it's important to note, I think, that Google Ventures isn't technically you know, part of Google. They can do right. their own thing. They're totally, it's a totally distinct entity that right. does not make strategic advance, investments. <laughs> right. However, uh, Eric Schmidt said there, there was a meeting they had a while ago where Eric Schmidt said, well, you know, the, the Google Ventures team is actually 20,000. Googlers. So it's just like, <laughs> well, they sound kind of connected. But. So, yes, obviously Google is going heavy, as heavy as they can into social now. I mean, mm. the you know, going back to the Zenga deal, mm -hmm. which, uh, has that even been verified yet? I think it's been confirmed. Schmidt sort of said something there, about it, but yeah, I don't think it, I, yeah. I think he said he was going to confirm it at some point. Right, okay, so Whatever anyway, we know that that happened, and we know that all these other deals are happening. They're going head on into this mm. stuff. But what do you think Apple, if, do you think Apple will retaliate against NG Moco? Because I think they, that development team has definitely benefited from prominent, you know, being featured on the oh, app Oh, yeah. Store. I mean, all of their big, I mean, that's their big thing is the, is the iPhone apps. That's right. what they've been doing. And, and the iTunes, like on the App Store itself, those, it's very subjective as to who gets featured. And I think they've definitely gotten featured quite a few times. They yeah, definitely sure, had some sure. very high quality games. Sure, they do. But do not so. every developer gets featured as much as they have. Do you think <laughs> yeah. they may see... You know, some sort of backlash from Apple? You know, maybe. <laughs> Apple's certainly not above doing something like that. In fact, I would, you know, wouldn't be surprised at all if they do that. But So Apple's mildly evil, maybe? Well, they just have their own business sense. <laughs> they have okay. their own business sense. That's one way to mind. put it. One way uh, but, I mean, Google, so Google, you know, with the Zenga deal, they kind of did the same thing to Facebook mm -hmm. as they're doing. You know, it's like they're just positioning themselves really to make a run at this. And if they fall on their face again, this is just going to be... I mean, awful. I, you know, so I saw Eric Schmidt was at the Techonomy conference last week, which I went to as well, and mm -hmm. uh, he did a sit down with reporters. And uh, obviously, the question of uh, social, the social moves, and gaming came up. And you know, Schmidt still made it seem like that they weren't going to take gaming very seriously. And it was funny because I know you had a story like the, I think the exact same day, saying like Google is starting to take gaming much more seriously. Facebook. Was it Facebook? Facebook? Yeah, Facebook had actually hired uh, like a new person to hire their partners, uh, that's right, to manage that's their partnerships. Right. That said, I th I'm sure Google's taking ga gaming seriously. Like, I just think Schmidt probably doesn't want to show his hand before he's ready to right. in that case. <laughs> yeah. So, and we'll see how it works out in a few months. Yeah. Google me. Uh, so I think that does it for this episode of OMG JK. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember to subscribe on iTunes or through RSS. And join us next week. Thank you.